Okay. The objective or topic of this is solving for a variable. Which sounds like what we've been doing, but it's not. Hmm? Yeah, how is this different? Why are you talking to us about abstract? You'll see in just a moment. Here's our first example we're going to do. And it's actually a formula you might know. Well, no, it's not. I was thinking it was diameter. It's D is equal to RT. And when we do these, the problems will say solve for, in this case, we're going to solve for R. This is what I wanted you to have a color or a, a pen versus a pencil. I like to put a box or circle or even just sometimes underline our target. We've been asked to solve for R. That means we need to get R on one side of the equal sign all by itself. I want you guys to think back. You don't have to flip your books back, but remember page five where we wrote down inverse operations? When we look at this, you want to think about what else is on the side of the equal sign with my target, in this case the R, and what's it doing with it? Well, right now there's a T with it, and it's being multiplied by it. What's the opposite of multiplication? Division. So we're going to divide what? T. And this is where we begin to get a little abstract. You guys knew coming into this class, if I said what is 4 divided by 4, you would tell me it's 1. 4 over 4 or 16 over 16. Any number in the numerator position or divided by the denominator of the same thing is going to equal 1. The same is true when it's two variables. We have no idea what t is standing in for. But whatever it is, this would be the same thing, and that divided by that would still be 1. That means our R is now going to be by itself. Are you guys following me on that? And this is what we wanted. We wanted to have R all by itself on e one side of the equal sign. <clears throat> what did that leave us with on the left? D over T or D divided by T. That's our answer. We were asked to isolate the R and to show what it equals. We have absolutely no idea what the values of these variables are, but we know that if we had a number for D and it was divided by T, it would equal R. And it makes sense because up here, when it was D equals RT, these two multiplied made this. So this divided by this is going to make that. They're inverse operations. Do you guys see that? Yes. Okay. Let's try something else that looks pretty simple. X plus Y equals Z. And we're going to solve for Y. This is our target. We want to get that y by itself on one side of the equal sign. We're going to subtract what? Because we're looking at the side of the equal sign where our target is, and what's with it? A positive x. If I subtract that x from both sides, I get y is equal to z minus x. We ask, we're asked to isolate this, and it's equal to this. Let's make it a little bit more challenging. This looks almost exactly the same, but it's not.
What do you notice about my why this time? Negative. Yeah, and I can't have that negative with it when it's done. I can only have the why. When we isolate a variable, it has to be positive. So this one is going to start off just like the one we just did. Let's subtract that x. What are we left with on the left side of the equation right now? Negative y, Negative y is equal to z minus x. Okay. I want to subtract this by what? Not subtract, I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to divide it by negative 1. Because I want to keep the y there, but I want it to be positive. And because it has a negative in front of it, that really means it's a negative 1y. To get the y by itself, I need to divide by negative 1. If I do that, I have to do it to the entire equation. Negative 1 divided by negative 1 gives us a positive 1 that's going to stay with this y, but now it's okay because it's going to be a positive y. z divided by negative 1 is going to change it to a negative, negative z. Negative x divided by negative 1 becomes positive x. Now, I'm going to just over here on to the right, I'm going to do this problem a second time how I normally would. Right now, I'm teaching it to you, so I'm trying to be extremely clear. It's not how I would have written it normally. This is what I would have normally done. I recognize I have my negative 1 I need to divide, so I would do exactly the same on the left side. But on the right side, I would usually just do that. Because I'm doing the same thing to both sides. But this is the reason I did this for you guys. This is what, week six of algebra? I wanted to make it really clear that I had to divide each piece on the right side by that negative one. I still need to do that over here. But think of this as kind of the opposite of if I did two times x plus three. I would need to distribute this to both of those, right? I need to divide both of these by that negative 1 when I write it that way. It's kind of like just putting that 2 out there if I put it just once under here. Get that out of the way. You don't want to think that that's actually part of the problem. So same as over here, except I took the shortcut of only writing the negative 1 one time. z divided by negative 1 would still be negative z. Negative x divided by negative 1 would still be positive x. And it equals y. And then we're done. This feels kind of different from what we normally do because we're not getting a number that's our answer. And sometimes we have numbers in these problems. That's what we're going to do next. And it feels like you should be getting this down to y equals something that's just a number. But we're not doing that today. We're just getting the variable by itself. The one we've been told to identify. And I'm going to write this straight from the textbook. You could find the problem in there if you looked. And you guys know I don't normally like using s as a variable because it looks like a 5. But the problem that we're going to do is s times t plus 3t equals 6. When you guys first started solving equations, they often look something like this. And your brains right now are thinking too. Because you're used to looking at that multiplication problem with 6 and 3 and starting to think about dividing, right? That's not what we're going to do. We have this st, and we're solving for the s. So I want to circle it. This is our goal. Let's evaluate what is on that side of the equal sign. Well, the s is there that we want to get by itself, and it's being multiplied by t. It also is being added to another term, 3t. 
that's probably the easiest thing to move first. When you're thinking about these equations, remember the whole idea of whatever I do to one side, I also have to do to the other side. But it's kind of like I'm just playing with pieces of this equation until I move them out of the way and get the one thing I want by itself. And I can move this 3t by doing what? Minus 3t. But I have to do it to the other side as well. That st we haven't done anything with. We just know we later want to get the s by itself, so it just drops down. st is now equal to 6 minus 3t. I'm still looking at this S. I want it alone. What's it with right now? T. What do I need to do with the T then? Yeah, and draw the line all the way underneath. And just put a T underneath there. You don't need to separate them. And I'll show you why in a second. Because the answer to this problem is S equals 6 minus 3T divided by T. And you're all like, what? I want to do more. It doesn't feel finished. Did I get the S by itself? Yes. Did I do inverse operations and get everything else moved to the other side of the equation? Yeah. I, I'm going to do a little side work because I know what you guys are probably thinking. Let's go back up to this part. If I have 6 minus 3t and I'm trying to move this t from the left side of the equation I'm doing what with it? Dividing. Let's try to divide 6 by t. What is the t? Do we know? Can I divide the 6 by a t if I don't know what it is and actually change it or is it just going to sit there as 6 over t? It's just going to sit there, isn't it? Now, I could divide the t out of this term if it was by itself there. But the 6 is there, and I can't divide a t out of it, so I have to leave this as it is. And I know that's confusing, but because I cannot divide this one, then I just want to put the line straight under all of it and show that I tried to divide by t and I moved it to that side of the equal sign, but that means it's finished. Okay? Questions? I know this is rough right now and you're not feeling totally confident, but are you willing to try a couple that we can go over in a minute? Okay.